Hey HCG family, it's Mimi. I am just checking in before I get ready to go out and meet my friend. And uh, I thought it was a perfect opportunity to uh, make a video with earrings on and a little bit of makeup. Uh, I don't wear that much makeup anymore since I got out of the cosmetic business. Um, unless I go out then you know, but I used to never walk out of the house without any makeup, period. Grocery store, didn't matter. I put something on, but um, I don't do that too much anymore. So, but on special occasions and dinner, I will put makeup on. So, anyway, I was just kind of let you know, uh, I had actually ordered, I wanted to talk just a tad bit about these, these, uh, the uh, vitamins, the amino acids that uh, Carol had talked about on her blog, especially the last two, um, the 5-HTP and the other one was L-T-Y-R-L, -L, is it T-R-Y, Trilazine? I haven't gotten that, in, I haven't gotten that yet, but I got all these other, all the other stuff that I ordered, and then this one here is, hasn't come yet, but Anyway, so I've tried the 5-HTP uh, at night, taking it at night. And the first time I tried it, I told you. Uh, maybe I didn't tell you. Uh, see, I made vlogs and then I didn't download them. But anyway, I got pretty sick. Uh, I mean, I got sick. So anyway, the next day, I didn't take it. And you're supposed to take it at night before bed, preferably, I think, a half an hour. And... On the bottle, it says to take with an empty stomach. Well, the first time I took it, I was basically, uh, my stomach was probably empty, but I did eat some, a little bit of nuts and some pepperoni. It's like later on because I ate earlier and I wasn't hungry, but I didn't get hungry until about, I'm trying to think if it was like, like 930 or something like that at night. And uh, to where my stomach's really growling, and I'm like, okay, am I going to be able to, you know, go to sleep? And now, all of a sudden, I got hungry. So anyway, it didn't play out very well, and I'd actually had taken a couple of times, too. I got, like, instant heartburn, so that didn't stay down. But after I got sick and I got back into bed about 1.30 in the morning, I actually slept till 9.30 in the morning. I mean, I didn't even get up and go pee, and that's kind of rare. So, anyway, I think the next day, the next night I didn't take it because of fear. And so last night I thought, okay, I'm going to take it, and I took it earlier. Like, I took it like around 8.30 or 9 o'clock just to kind of see what was going to happen. As the time went on, my stomach was basically pretty, was empty, except for a cup of coffee. And uh, yes, I can drink a cup of coffee at any time of the night, unlike my dad. I mean, my dad can drink a pot of coffee and then stand up, he used to before he had a stroke. And I mean, he could stand up and fall asleep after, he drank coffee after he cut the grass. I mean, it just did not keep him awake at all, so... So, it's rare that coffee will really bother me and uh, keep me awake unless I'm ready to go to sleep. Or I, I'm more prone to have stuff on my mind, and my mind won't shut down. So, I was taking melatonin. But anyway, so I took this HTP, 5-HTP, last night, and uh, my stomach did start getting woozy. But... I hadn't had anything to eat in a while, so I was kind of like, okay, what should I do? Now, the, all the research I've done on it, some people say that it, it will kind of make you, your stomach feel upset, but after a while, that will, you know, as you can do It could be the UPS guy delivering my other vitamins, I don't know. But anyway, so I started getting a little bit woozy, 
So for some crazy reason, I thought, you know what? I'm just going to go eat me some pickles. So I, I must have ate like five pickles. I mean, they were small pickles. Ate about five pickles. Went back in my bedroom. And drank some water. And still, it was kind of woozy. So I thought, well, first day of uh, phase four. I went in there. I got me about. I got me some saltine crackers, um, and I uh, ate about really about six of them. I guess the rest that was in the pack. I'm kind of. I'm guesstimating on that, but so I ate the crackers, and that kind of settled my stomach. For some reason, saltines do that. I settled my stomach, and um, after that. I was fine. I didn't get like sleepy. I didn't have that weird feeling that I had the first time I took it. But I, you know, we finally went to we went to sleep. Well, when I say sleep, we turned the light off and the TV off, and probably went to sleep about it was like about one o'clock. And I woke up on the hour. I kept waking up, kept waking up about. I think two times I got up and went to the restroom, but I just, for some reason, I just kept waking up and waking up, and I think my husband got up in the morning finally about, it was nine something, I think, when he got out of bed, and I fell right back asleep, and he opened the door to let the dog in about, it was like 10 after 10, and I was dreaming, and apparently this 5-HTP causes you to have vivid dreams. I dream all the time. Sometime or the other, I'm, I do probably most of my dreaming right before I get up and, you know, which is usually like right in the morning, right? And I was dreaming with Guy Fietti, <laughs> who does diners, drive-ins, and dives. And so I was dreaming, I was at like this old house that was apparently going to be our old house. It's probably from watching <laughs> How, uh, house Hunters and House Internationals and we watch, we watch these this is what we watch at night, um, House Hunters International and that. But anyway, we're like, I remember my family was there. My daughter was there. And Guy Fietti was there. And he was taking the Tostadas, you know, like you buy at the store, the flower ones. And he said, here, he said, this is where she roll them out. You know, you just roll them a little bit. So he's making stuff. So I go in and I tell my daughter, who's like in my kitchen, which needs a lot of work done to it. I mean, it's, there's like maybe two or three cabinets in it. And I'm telling her that guy's in there and he's doing this and he thinks this is a good idea. And so I go back in and he's got like these stacks of these things that look like uh, pancakes. And... Um, so I see those stacks, and he said, hey, you want some of them? I said, do you know what those things would do to me? I said, I can't eat those. I said, they just got, they got flour in them. I said, I eat them, they'll fall up like glue plastered, and they'll lay in my intestines, and it'd be terrible, and I'll get fat. But I said, I would like, because I look, and I've seen all these alcohol beverages, and, you know, I see lime in that. I said, I would like, baby, if you'd mix me up one of those early morning uh, special drinks. And then my husband opens up the door to let the dog in, and I wake up. So I don't know how vivid the dream was because I can have some pretty wacky dreams. <laughs> but I said, man, I said, God, Fiat, he was getting ready to make me up some stupid breakfast drink with vodka or something. I don't know, but... <laughs> anyway, so, but, so I'm going to keep taking this. I'm hoping the other one comes in uh, either today or tomorrow. It says, I tracked it, it says like the 5th. But anyway, I um, I got up this morning to weigh, and I was 0 0.2 down. So I was 0 0.2 down, so I'm like, oh, that's just great. So, um so today I actually made my husband, I made that roast, I got a chuck roast and made that roast that heavy dobby and turned the oven at 500 and left it in there, which is bizarre, but it actually cooked it. I mean, I left it in there for 15 minutes, turned the oven off, left it in there. Well, <laughs> I made that yesterday 
So, I, you know, I took it out. We What was left over, I had already sauteed mushrooms and onions. And uh, so I, what was left over of that, which was pretty much, because I just really wasn't that hungry yesterday either, even at dinner time. And, and like I said last night, I hadn't eaten anything. So when I ate those pickles and those crackers, that's what I had for dinner. I did not get hungry. I don't know what's wrong. I didn't, uh, I hadn't ate all day. I had tasted some of the meat after cutting it up for my husband for dinner. But anyway, it was nice today that I had, we had leftover Amish noodles. And I went ahead and made um, made the noodles and put the rest of that roast in there with the mushrooms and the onions. And uh, made the noodles and some chicken broth. And, uh, okay. I'm going to grab and kill them in bugs, let me tell you. Um, but uh, anyway, I tasted, you know, trying to taste the noodle, you know, to see if it was al dente, you know, because it was, you know, it's like the good, you know, the nice little noodles. And and uh, so, and I hear them like, like biting it down like this, and I'm getting ready to spit it out and, you know, and to throw it in the sink and not eat it. And I thought, Hello. Day two, phase four. I am going to swallow this noodle. And I swallowed the noodle. Um, did I feel confident sitting down and eating a bowl with the noodles in it and the meat and the mushrooms? Nope. Not so. Didn't even really want it, but I swallowed it. I could have spit it out and been just as happy about it. But anyway, that's what my husband had for dinner. Uh, today leftover so now I can go and enjoy me a salad and I probably will get it without the croutons I don't want to get in a habit of where I start adding in a bunch of bread products that um, is going to be bad for me there's no sense in going down that road if I can if I can avoid it um, so you know pick and choose what you want I want the salad dressing it's probably got disgusting corn syrup in it high fructose corn syrup from Monsanto's corn Roundup Ready crap and you know so I'm going to opt for that. Another thing too I was going to do and I forgot to do it this morning so I might this evening is I got coconut sugar. I showed that to you on one blog and I, you know I want to put that in my coffee and not do the sweet and low so and kind of see how it goes if I have like a tablespoon of that in my coffee apparently I haven't tasted it but apparently it's not as sweet as sugar so that's something I want to do is to try that because I don't want to use I do not like sweetly for all this I already told you all that so anyway so that's it point two down I was 198.8 you know so I stepped on the scale three times <laughs> You ever stepped on the scale and you try to like levitate? <laughs> you know, you're stepping on the scale, but you're trying to hold up your body. <laughs> trying to get it to make it to say, 196, 196. But being that's very difficult to levitate, <laughs> unless you're that freaky guy that's on TV. So anyway, 13 minutes for crying out loud. So anyway, that's, there I am checking in. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I hope everybody is doing well um, emotionally and mentally. And don't overthink. I'm an overthinker, and that's what I do. And uh, so I, you know, I've got to get back to okay, Holly. That's you have put. I put my brakes on about overthinking stuff before I actually was going to get back on the protocol. My mind, heart, everything, soul was prepared to do HCG and to do this protocol. So I've been through birthdays. I've been through, you know, I, I've been through all of these different special occasions, and. I do not want to, there is no food out there that tastes that good for me to go ahead and to jeopardize this work. I do not want to go through what I went through before and gaining um, all that weight uh, back. But I also don't want to 
overthink mentally and emotionally. I am not one that likes to spend too much time in the past. Um, I just can't do it. I personally, and this is just me, I have never seen anything good come from it. I know, I know people, they have to do that and they, they have to come to grips with some things in, in their life. And I think all of us have to. All of us have to come, you know, to a point to where we deal with this issue so we can kind of move on. It's, but I do know there's a danger if you park there too long. If you park there too long, it will take you down um, roads that really you don't need to go down. And, and maybe that's just something I've learned over the years. Um, so, you know, I hope everybody, when we're doing all of this analyzing that we do and, and, and going through things, especially things in our childhood, um, <clears throat> I could have picked, for me, I could have picked anything. Uh, I, there, was a, there was a lot, a long list of things I could have picked to give way to why I eat, but, and I want to say, I, I, I am blessed with the fact that I don't think that when I eat, I, it's so much as emotional as it, it, as it was out of boredom. And, uh, and I do think that that kind of, you know, because I started dieting right after I got back from my grandmother's. Uh, in Tennessee, which ate all this good food and everything, and uh, so, but I know you got to con you have to move on. You have to go forward, and you have to say this is for this is just for my body to keep this temple alive, this machine running like it's supposed to, and to keep us out of the doctors. That's what I want. I don't want to have to go to the doctor unless it is a life or death. I am not going to go to the doctor, um, and but that's just that is um, that's me, and I know everybody has to pick and choose and do what's right for them and for their body, and <clears throat> and I, you know what I found encouraging is yesterday what I did is I was going back and I was watching uh, Miss HCG girl, and I was watching her uh, I think her second and third round. And just picking out things, you know, just picking some of them out. And, and realizing that listening to her was, and this is, this is just me again, listening to her was like um, listening to a woman that's very um, balanced. That's, you know, you have to have some balance in your life and the way you're thinking and, and, uh, even when she come up with, with gains and um, with all these different things, even like making correction days. I mean, there's sometimes she'll say, you know, I can't correct. This is what happened, but I'm not going to be able to correct tomorrow. I'm not going to be, which is against the protocol. We all know that, you know. I mean, he says immediately. This has to be corrected immediately. But, you know, here's a woman that's done six rounds and she's not going to, she's not upset about it, but she makes the correction. She does what her, you know, what, what she feels is like right for her body to do. And I, you know, to me, that's like, you know, Holly, come on, you know that, you know, I'm, I can't, none of us can put ourselves in this box. And I understand how important the protocol is. And I understand, um, about, in phase three and that you know what we need to do and if it indeed is really resetting the hypothalamus if that is real true science because we've you know we've learned about this leptin and hormones and everything but the fact remains is that you have to have balance and not put yourself in a box to say that I'm not going to be able to uh, eat certain things and ever again and uh, and if you do, and you step on the scale, and you're like, you know what, I'm going to make a correction day. I'm going to do an all-protein day, or I'm going to do a fat day, or I'm going to do, I'm just going to eat clean for the next couple of weeks, or the next week, or whatever. And just say, this is our life. This is how we're, we're living. And, uh, and to 
apply that to everything. Apply that to everything on our life. That bad things happen, interruptions happen, stress is never going to go away. You cannot, you can't get rid of stress. Um, regardless, I don't care what you do. You can, you know, I can sit and eat a whole pizza because I'm stressed out and eat pizza and drink a six pack of beer. And tomorrow, I'm still going to have the same stress. The only thing is, is I'm going to be sick as a dog. The stress still was there. It's, it's learning how to. And I think also, too, taking the right nutrients. And I think the vitamins and stuff like that. That's why uh, when I listen to Carol and the second one that she takes, I know a lot of people, I was doing some research about it and viewing people's reviews on um, even the 5-HTP, which people have swore by, said that it's changed their life. I mean, to me, that, that's a huge statement because the only thing that's ever changed my, my life was the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the only one that has changed my life. But for someone that has been uh, taking these serious drugs that the doctors prescribe that is causing so many terrible side effects, causing huge weight gains, and to know that they have found something uh, that they can get cheap for seven dollars and something even at you know the health food store and can take that and say I can sleep I wake up refreshed I wake up in a better mood I wake up like 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 you know like when you're young and you finally get up and you're ready to go and you know it you know if we can find out about these things uh, then we you know to try them, and I appreciate Carol making that, um, you know, making that video for us to watch. And so I thought, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to try it. So it's 22. I love you guys. I hope everybody's having releases, but most of all, I hope everybody out there has peace because you can go through all kinds of terrible things and have peace. And that makes a difference to be at peace. And personally, that peace I can only get from the Lord. I can't get it from food. I can't get it from drugs. I can't get it from alcohol. I can't get it from anything. I can't get it from my grandchildren or my children. I can only get it through Him. Big hugs. <laughs>